So for the weekly challenge inside our community, we were sculpting this sorrow head. And as you can see over here, some people did a great job, where some were, some were struggling with making the planes of the face, right? These planar feeling, the creases that you see. So in this video, I want to break down the process of how I made these planes and also share some insight with you on how you can do it as well. So basically, there are two main ways that you can do this. One is that you start adding the stylization, these planes from the get-go. And the other one is that you make a generic face and then I proceed to add these cosmetics and stylize it. And the second method is what I recommend to you. Because whenever you try to copy something from a reference, you are merely just training your observation skills and learning nothing in the process. I have literally wasted years trying to do this when I try to copy something from a reference because the generic advice, oh, use references, use references. It doesn't really work. Now, even when you're in school and if you've ever cheated in your exam, which I have a lot, by the way, if you just copy answer from a friend, you're not learning anything new, right? You're merely just copying what you see. And so many people just put wasted effort when they follow a reference and they just try to copy what they see. Yeah, it trains your observation skills. Of course, you can make good art. But do you actually understand what you are making? Do you understand what these planes mean? Let me be honest with you. When I first, when I saw the Asaro head and I was not practicing sculpting, I used to think, oh, what a difficult thing this is. I have to learn the planes of the head. I have to memorize all of this. I would try making sculpts of my favorite characters from Pinterest and from other artists. Just copy what they are doing, their, their style is, and it would never, never turn out to be the way that I expected it to. My monkey brain kept telling me to do this because it looks cool and it would get attention from other people. But truth be told, I was only wasting my time. I was looking at the wrong direction all along. The proper way that would have really helped me was if I understand, understood what the structure of the face is. And after putting so much, so much years, effort, time, sweat into this, I've, re I've come to the conclusion that the best way to learn is to just make good generic faces. Be aware, understand the structure of the face first and then proceed to study stylized versions. So the real strategy is practice generic heads. Understand the face structure and deliberately practice the areas that you know you are weak in. And I promise you, I just did this for a few weeks last year when I started sculpting. And not only did I get good at making better sculpts, but also understanding all of this became so much easier. I've never studied the planes of the heads, but the Asaro head was easy for me because I understood what the face structure is and all I needed to do was to implement that knowledge. With a bit of stylization, a bit techniques that I will show you in this video how you can make the planes. But the reason I'm telling you all this is because I don't want you to waste your time the way that I did. I want you to know that without the basics, the knowledge that I'm sharing, it cannot be applied. Because the basics is the foundation and no matter what you do, if the foundation is shit, then no matter what cosmetics or whatever wizardry you do on it, it's still gonna look bad because the foundation is bad. Bad foundation, good stylization is always, always going to look like a bad sculpt. And yeah, don't worry. If that is something that you're struggling with, you can join my free school with free courses inside designed just to do that. To put you on the fast lane of learning how to sculpt faces. So yeah, don't worry. If that is something that you're struggling with, I got you covered. Now let's move on to the video. And like I told you, the procedure was really simple. I would simply made a generic looking skull with about the ballpark proportions of the reference that I was using. And whenever I use reference, I'm never, never focusing on like 100% likeness. As long as I'm in the ballpark, I'm totally okay. I'm happy. My main goal is just to get the features in. And I try to keep everything as low poly as I can because it is so much easy to adjust and move things around if, if needed. And because I did not fell into the trap of adding details from the start or stylizing it from the get-go, I got to this stage in about 14 minutes, where I just had this rough looking, generic looking, smooth face. And once I have that, now I proceed to add the planes. And for that, I just simply use a combination of the scrape, crease and the smooth brush. The basic structure of the face is already there and all I need to do is to just look at the reference and carve out the planes as I see over there. And I just use the crease brush to do that. Whenever I want to dig in, I use it normally. And whenever I want to pull out, if I see a protrusion, I just hold control and then pull it out. And in between, I just use the smooth brush to level out the planes to remove any bumps that are possibly there. Like you can see over here on the cheek line, I just hold control and then pull 
pull the mesh out and introduce this crease in the process. The only thing that you need to be wary of is that you don't smooth over the line, but you smooth around it. It levels out those planes and introduces the planes almost automatically. And you can see after the mouth, it was now time for the eyes. I just simply sharpen and stylize the, the forms and the shapes that I already have. So many people get scared off and are intimidated by this. But you can see this is actually pretty, pretty simple once you have a good understanding of the basics. And now in all honesty, I have not memorized these planes of the head. I don't know what they are actually. I'm simply looking at the reference and adding the lines where I see them, which is also a, a pretty good skill to have, by the way. So many people fail at the simple task of looking at references, including me. In my early stages, I would literally sculpt and then look at the reference. Whereas the reference is the answer she drew. And if you're not looking at the reference, you are merely shooting in the dark. The reference is there for you. And all you have to do is to just look, sculpt, look, sculpt. And not the other way around. Don't sculpt and then decide to look at your reference. Now, it was pretty easy to sharpen these small forms, but the, but the forehead and the head were a bit tricky. So what I did over here is I used the scrape brush to simply shave off some of the mesh and introduce these planes really, really roughly. The scrape brush is really, really cool for shaving your sculpt. And yeah, you can see uh, once I introduced these forms, it was just so much easier for me to stylize them as now all I have to do was to use the crease brush and to tighten these edges that I could see. It's really, really that simple. And in the process, I would also smoothen the planes that I make. Now, maybe the explanation is not enough. So let's sculpt a bit, shall we? So this is the head that I sculpted and let me smooth out these features so I can show it to you once again of how I did it and some of the precautions that you might take. Now, once you have a smooth sculpt like this, all you need to do is to simply just get the crease brush. And then right now I'm holding it. Let me turn on the screencast, which is something that I always forget to do. Yeah, <laughs> you, you'll hear me whining about this too, so many times. All right. Now you can see, I can already see this. And even if it was like super smooth like this, all right, even if it was super smooth, all I need to do is to just hold control and pull this mesh out. And once I have this crease, I'm going to smooth around it. All right. If you go on the line, of course, you're going to smooth it out. So don't do that. But smooth around it. You can see I'm getting close to it, but not on it. Also, let me just turn off shadows because it's a bit distracting. Yeah, much better. You can see it's smooth. But of course, if you go over it a few more times or even if you use the pinch brush then it is something that will sharpen these edges even more all right now the pinch brush and the crease brush are different in a way that the crease brush also digs in all right it's like a draw sharp brush plus a pinch brush whereas the pinch brush won't really dig into your mesh or anything it's just going to bring the vertices super super close so you can of course like i'm showing you you can go over it over it with the pinch brush and bring it even closer if you want now right here for the lips i'm going to crease as well but for the part outside that i want to pull i'm going to hold control right because if you don't hold control it's going to dig in which is something that we don't want so hold control sharpen these parts Also, we're going to sharpen this part right here. And in the center, you guessed it right, we're not going to hold control. We're just going to simply sculpt it in. And you can see that adding these planes is not a problem. I think there was a crease over here as well. I'm not sure. So let's load the reference up. Let's not shoot in the dark. Now with the reference in place, I can see that we also have a crease right over here. Now I'm adding the crease and then smoothing in between it to level out any bumps that we might have. Also, we have a crease right over here. Also, we have a crease over here. And then, of course, smoothing in between them. And yeah, if you want to add this finishing touch, of course, you can use the pinch brush and tighten it up even more.
So the smoothing in between the planes that I just created. Let's pinch this as well. Let's use the crease brush. Oh boy. Yeah. Let's sharpen this. And right here you can see these two planes. Let's just smooth on them while maintaining our crease. Let's also smooth around the planes to level it out. If you want to see how I did specific parts like the eye, ear or any part at all, you can watch the full length, real time, unedited video right here. It's not narrated, but yeah, you can see the process. Goodbye. Take care.